is the director at icar central institute for women in agriculture situated at bhuvaneshwar odisha dr shrivastava sir uh, has did his msc in agriculture entomology with silver medal from the cs azad university of the agriculture and technology kanpur in 1982 and phd in 90, 1988 he is the life member of ascii association hyderabad member of the board of uh, management uh, ouat uh, bhuvaneshwar m- member of the board of studies at shri shri university kattak member of academic council of uh, giet university uh, gunupur member of governing body of the uh, society for the management of uh, information uh, learning and extension uh, he is also member of uh, state level executive committee on national livestock mission government of odisha he is the member of the national horticulture mission at government of odisha uh, also sir is adjunct professor in the ms swaminathan school of the agriculture Karal uh, Khemundi at the uh, Centurion University of the Odisha. Uh, he has international exposure uh, of Sweden, Denmark, South Africa, Nepal. Uh, published many articles in the various national and international journals. And uh, sir has received international visiting uh, scholar uh, fellowship from the ITRISAT uh, Asia Center for ten years in nineteen ninety seven. Uh, he has also received the citation and cash prize during the second national innovation day function uh, at uh, on 15th of october 2001 by national innovation society agra up he has also received best innovator farmer guide and friend by honorable minister uh, government of uh, uttar pradesh in 2004 uh, bharat jyoti award in 2013 uh, azhara uh, fellowship award in 2016 he also received the bharat ratna dr radhakrishna gold medal award in 2018 uh, certificate of appreciation from the department of biotechnology ministry of science and technology government of india in 2018 krishi ratna award in 2018 certificate of achievement in category of the leadership in recognition of the uh, excellence portrayed in dedication loyalty and professionalism in 2018 national award of excellence in 2018 certificate of appreciation in bronze category in five, uh, uh, on uh, october 5 2019 by the minister of finance government of india uh, also uh, he has received the bharat ratna rajiv gandhi gold medal award in 2019 he is the regional expert of sark meeting held at uh, uh, kathmandu nepal in 2019 and uh, sir has also received the lifetime achievement award 2020 so list of the award issued by dr shivasthava sir is very big He has also been honored in recognition of the outstanding leadership and uh, scientific contribution by the ICR Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture Bhuvaneshwar during the annual day of annual day of 1st April 2018 he has brought the glory for institute of, uh, of ICR uh, CIWA as one of the 10 best agriculture institute in India 2018 best women Empower- empowerment institute in Asia award 2019 and best institute in agriculture award to, uh, 2020 so today we are very fortunate to have him as a uh, eminent speaker for the today's morning session actually uh, sir was invited for the yesterday's uh, morning session but because of his engagement at the other uh, uh, place uh, he join us today so uh, on behalf of the nhp dr bd kv akola a very warm welcome to you sir and uh, today sir is going to guide you on the topic uh, role of a woman entrepreneur in the agriculture development so once again uh, welcome sir and uh, now you can start your session okay madam thank you very much for uh, my this uh, very big introduction and uh, i would like to first uh, appreciate the dr anvelkar uh, and uh, his team for organizing such type of big training program and uh, so far uh, i have given various lectures in various training program but this is the biggest uh, participants uh, number in this training program that is more than uh, 1000 so congratulations to the team akola for organizing such type of training program and uh, you see that uh, this is possible only due to the our central government scheme digital india otherwise uh, whether we can be able to think that 1000 participant can uh, participate at a time 
in any of the training program so thanks to the prime minister and our central government uh, to be visionary and uh, launching various uh, programs at the national level flexi programs so starting from the digital india program so we are taking the good results from the digital india and uh, this is uh, being uh, facilitated to all of the state government central government as well as the foreign country so uh, yesterday as madam has uh, told that yesterday my program was scheduled but uh, due to some of the meeting this honorable uh, central union minister dr naren singh tomar sahab in the morning as well as in the evening in morning there was one of the launching program that data recovery program of the icr center because you know that uh, once uh, all the, we have moved towards this e office so now in the icr system there is no movement of the hard file or hard paper so whole icr had adopted e office uh, so that is required the security how the data if any damage occurred so how it can be recovered so the, yesterday that uh, one uh, center has been inaugurated in narm hyderabad first data will remain in the new delhi but uh, the, uh, that is another seismic zone and narm hyderabad hyderabad is another seismic zone so that facility has been uh, created in the uh, council for data recovery as well as uh, this uh, alumni association and accreditation facility of the state agriculture universities so these facilities now everything is online initially the people were visiting for the accreditation but now every facility has uh, will be taken on online mode so this is a good initiative of the council while and uh, while in the second half again honorable uh, union minister dg icr uh, rupala sahab all the people were there and yesterday two new kbks were uh, inaugurated first one kbk lakhimpur khiri that uh, already there is one kbk that is the second kbk and you all might be knowing that uh, on the basis of population this kbk has been decided the district who are having more number of population there is a possibility to open two kbks so yesterday two kbks were inaugurated first kbk is in up lakhimpur khiri and uh, another kbk was uh, inaugurated in uh, kbk kundukur in uh, andhra pradesh so evening uh, this program was there and morning that program was there and we, we all have been invited to attend that meeting so yesterday i could not uh, participate and i am thankful to the organizers to reschedule my talk and uh, i am also uh, happy to learn that uh, so much of so many participants are attending uh, this training program from different parts of the country so this is a good thing to interact and uh, share my some of the experiences to all of you screen sharing abhi wahan kiya nahi tha Yes. Uh, it is visible now, madam. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible to us. Okay. Thank you very much. So, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, all the participants from my behalf in the uh, training program organized by the Akola team, and I also welcome virtual welcome to my institute, that is the. Central Institute for Women in Agriculture. One or two line I will speak about my institution. This institution was uh, established in 1996, and uh, as a national research center for women in agriculture. Then thereafter, keeping the importance of this uh, women in agriculture, this was upgraded in Directorate of Research on Women in Agriculture in 2008, and further, it was again upgraded in 2014. as a central institute for women in agriculture and this present efc as honorable dg sir has told that globally this importance of women in agriculture is increasing day by day and lot of the questions is also coming from the parliament related to the women empowerment and recently you might have might have listened that honorable prime minister uh, this uh, narendra modi ji 
he has also pointed out that the there should be some of the technology which can reduce the drudgery of the farm owner women and ease their worker in the agriculture so again we are proposing to upgrade this institution at the global institute for women in agriculture already one meeting has been held and uh, uh, second meeting is due in the next month and uh, then thereafter we will be proposing in our efc so this is in brief about this uh, institution development and presently we are having all india coordinated research project on home science that is again to be uh, going to be renamed as the all india coordinated research project on women in agriculture and another all india coordinated project is also running in this institution that is related to drudgery that is the all india coordinated research project on isa ergonomic safety in agriculture so the, that is the center of this isa this institution and we have 13 center in throughout the country for this everyone women in agriculture so by that uh, coordination uh, we are doing the work for the addressing the issues related to women in agriculture and uh, the topic has been uh, given to me by the organizers very good topic emerging topic role of women entrepreneurs in agriculture development certainly initially we have been talking about the women farmers women farmers but since our uh, new policy of this uh, national education policy has been declared and our agriculture has also been declared as a professional subject yeah very recently in fifth dean committee it has been reported uh, recommended that agriculture has become now the professional so our system of the teaching has to be changed our thought of the thinking has to be changed and our delivery of the thing system delivery system has to be changed that how we can become the professional and how we can make the people professional as well as the student and young generations and rural youth as the professional so this is a big challenge for all of us because the system is changing demand is changing this uh, in national education policy 2020 again this uh, uh, entrepreneurship development has been uh, taken in the education policy and it is coming in very big way that after the completion of this uh, degree program students should not move for the search of job rather than they should start their own business so that is the thought of the next national education policy and uh, that uh, business should not be uh, at local level rather than it should be promoted at national level as well as the global level so these are the some of the things in uh, that perspective this topic has been selected so in my presentation uh, i would go, be telling about introduction roles and responsibilities of women farmers issues and constraints of women entrepreneurs opportunities for women entrepreneurs challenges uh, success stories conclusion and way forward so this is the my uh, framework for the presentation so as uh, we know that women are one of the major stakeholder of agriculture sector and pivotal in the growth of this sector why this the women is the major uh, stakeholders in agriculture when we are going in to see in the ancient time then stone age then uh, these are the women only who identified the fruits and uh, roots which can be consumed as a food when the people were living and uh, uh, their life was based on the hunting of the animals and uh, their food was like like the non veg but the, these are the women traditional women they have identified and in, initiated this uh, root and food crops for the consumption then pivotal in the growth of this sector why these are the pivotal in the growth of agriculture because as you know that uh, now it is we are talking about the doubling the farmers income and uh, we have about 50% population of the india is women so any program cannot be successful if we will buy cart and we will not mainstream this 50% population once the 100% population of the india will be mainstream to our the agriculture or anything only then the development of the possible and we will become in the the line of the developed country still we are developing country although lot of development has taken place 
but still we are in the developing country and target is by 2025 we have to become the developed country then mostly perform operations which are time consuming labor intensive and monotonous often regarded as unskilled activities so you all are knowing that uh, this uh, women are performing lot of jobs from morning to evening but those things has been not been recognized or documented so uh, until unless you you are not able or we are not able to document the any things none of the policies being recommended how the policies being recommended document is required some data is required so if documentation will be strong data will be strong certainly the good policies will be coming and on the basis of this documentation and data niti ayog is also recommending for the women uh, uh, empowerment your food and agriculture organization they are also recommending this women empowerment and uh, in next slide i will talk to this about the sustainable development goal in which about uh, all of the country representative has participated they have also uh, described uh, one of the goal that is gender equality so not is the local level not national level but at the global level these people are recognize the importance of the women then they contribute significantly in on farm production of agriculture crops uh, farm they are also contributing on the farm then rice transplanting you may be knowing you might have seen that 100% work of the rice transplanting is being done by the women then fundamental role in natural germplasm conservation and protection yes this is very important because uh, by birth women is considered uh, considered to nurture the nature uh, this is uh, you, i would like to give here one example you might be knowing this uh, dasahari variety of the mango how this has been developed one of the women was visiting in a, his uh, relation relations she has seen that uh, one uh, one mango very good quality she has brought one of the seed and planted in his village and that village name is dasari and uh, that become the root stock for the multiplication of this dasari variety so in that way that has been uh, evolved by the you know, women only so there are several things who has been taken and collection by this uh, women and uh, we are getting the food uh then profound role in value addition and processing of horticultural crops certainly we all are enjoying that uh, their role in the value addition none of the people will be going to deny that let us say that example of our house or our home who is cooking our woman is cooking, cooking. and uh, who is putting the value taste variations these all are the women so in that way they are also sustaining the population of the india as well as the country and uh, globally they are sustaining the population by adding the value addition and nutrification value addition as well as nutrification to take care of the human life either it is children or it is parents or whatever it is they are maintaining this well this value of the life of the human beings then uh, role varies as farmers labor entrepreneurs uh, different categories of the on the basis of facility available for them sometimes they are the housewife sometimes they are working as a laborer and some of the time some of the become as a entrepreneurs then enormous workforce in the agriculture sector certainly maximum work uh, has been done in some of the state particularly the eastern state and northern state maximum work is being done by the women so there is a big contribution and not only in women in our country but globally their their population i will be giving their detail in next slide the magnitude of their participation is uh, barely visualized which created perceptible gender gap so this uh, man dominated society we are not recognizing their contribution but uh, if you take the example of home or our house who is managing the house whether man or woman certainly woman is the manager of the house and we are the man or the facilitator but woman are the manager and if you consider house as an unit of any of the country 
so because house make the villages villages make the blocks build blocks make the district district make the state and state make the country so if in the unit wise women is the manager of each and every house then certainly at the national level women are contributing towards the management of this country but we are not recognizing the time has come to recognize their contribution and recently in the as my introduction it was uh, told by the madam that uh, in sark meeting i have participated and uh, that contains the eight countries participant it was decided to monetize their role unpaid role unpaid work so once you will be able to monetize and you will tell that this much of the work has been done by the women which has saved the valuable amount of the country and contributed this much of gdp certainly their work will be recognized and policy new policy will be framed so at this juncture monetization of their work is also very much required and uh, suppose if any woman has become the entrepreneur and their turnover have are 10 crores so certainly they are contributing in the country development with a value of 10 crore so these this is are the system of monetization so in that way we are going to uh, proceed further years and their monetization is due and it will be initiated so what is the status of agripreneur in india agripreneurship refers to the act of setting up a new business or reviving an existing business so as to take advantage from new opportunities presently around 12.1% women are in agriculture and mining and manufacturing sector and 11% of adult indian population engage in total early entrepreneurship activity not a big activity but early entrepreneurship activity they are involved as the honorable prime minister has told that the local local ko vocal karna hai so these are the local type of entrepreneurship they are doing at the village level or the district level uh, then women entrepreneur is a women or group of women who initiate organize and run a business enterprise a uh, government of india has defined women entrepreneurs as owning and controlling an enterprise with a woman having a minimum financial interest of 51% of the capital and 51% of the employment generated for the woman only then it will be considered as a woman entrepreneur there should be capital 51% generated by the woman and their uh, employment uh, or participation of women should be also 51% otherwise what we were thinking if 100% women are doing that is women enterprise that is not like that uh, if 51% are more than that women are uh, being benefited it has been considered as a women enterprise women entrepreneurs provide employment 13.45 million people in the country so there are the women entrepreneurs they are giving the employment about 79% are their mark self finance government has not given any finance they had developed their own kerala tops with 13% enterprises followed by tamil nadu 12% and karnataka 9% so there are various states who are far behind in the agricultural development and you might be knowing that why this kerala is uh, why kerala is on the top in the entrepreneurship when you take the data of the education kerala is 100% education for the women so that contributes towards the development of the enterprises the proportion of female employees in the total employment of the small scale industry sector uh, was of the order of 13.3% although this is a old data in uh, sixth economic census 1314 so now it has been increased then uh, what is the scope of women entrepreneurship as i was telling in my previous slide that the, what is the global level i will share in the my uh, next slide here is the global picture nearly half of the world's farmer are women 
and in india it is around 70% how this women can become the entrepreneurship once these women can be empowered economically because money is the main problem finance is the main problem to become an entrepreneur so there is a need of dire need of the economic empowerment of the women to reinvest their communities leading to a greater self reliance prosperity and food security then rapid urbanization in developing countries is opening to opportunities for women to be entrepreneurs uh, as you have seen that uh, various smart countries is, has been identified so once the smart country like a things is being identified and being in, in implemented and people are market, migrating from the rural areas to urban areas so that is opening the space Uh, to start the enterprises or uh, entrepreneurship to the women and particularly the agripreneurs agripreneurs means what is agripreneurs if you start you any business related to entrepreneurship or business in agriculture it is called agripreneur so that agripreneur either it is on the farm level or at the farm gate level or so if you are starting on your village level this is also entrepreneurship and if you are going to the farm gate level or uh, to the consumers and uh, the suppliers so these are the various roles you can this is called as the uh, women entrepreneurs now you did you see this is the horticulture is as the emerging sector of the enterprises or entrepreneurship development by the women as you might be knowing that the maximum participation in the horticulture sector is again by the women from the nursery raising to the harvesting plucking packaging uh, all those things is being done by the women at the village level as well as the in the industry level so what is the role of this horticulture 33% of share of output in agriculture then contributes about 50% to agricultural gdp the horticulture only contributing 50% gdp so you see that uh, how much possibility for this uh, entrepreneurship development in the horticulture sector that enormous employment opportunities in various primary secondary and tertiary areas in the horticulture there significant contribution towards export of agricultural produce yes now it is uh, people are exporting flower people are exporting uh, jam jelly murabba so these are the various uh, horticultural produce and uh, people are also exporting this super, super food value added food fortified food flowers so these are the opportunity from the horticulture then uh, horticulture again globally second highest producer of fruits and vegetables india india is second highest uh, fruits and flower growers then again this food security nutrient fortification and livelihood enhancement so initially this uh, horticulture was not pro promoted uh, up to this extent as it is going on now so people were the uh, people's livelihood were dependent on the agriculture only that was the basically crops but now this uh, people are talking about the nutrition security initially we have been talking about the production productivity now we are talking about the doubling the farmers income and further we have upgraded now we are talking not the production productivity doubling the farmers income but now the we are talking about the nutritional security that suppose you are eating 1 kg of rice so whether it is nutritionally fit to consume the body or what it is is going to provide the whole of the nutrition of the body to sustain the body uh, in a working condition so now the people are thinking and talking about up to that level so there are various types of uh, enterprises in agriculture which can be done by the men and as well as women so this uh, first enterprise is production enterprises or it can be also called the family enterprises in which we can say as family labors are involved only then service providing enterprises then input producer enterprises and processing and marketing enterprises so these are the major four areas of the enterprises development types of enterprises in production mein main iska aur ek next slide dikhata hu usme kya kya aata hai 
yes production enterprises includes beekeeping floriculture hydroponics mushroom farming so these all comes under the production enterprises and all these you might have seen that almost uh, if not 100% so 90% popular participation of the women is there in beekeeping floriculture hydroponic development as well as in the mushroom farming again poultry farming 100% care will be taken by the being taken by the women then ornamental fish farming very remunerative for the women farmers required less time and less input then seaweed farming again it has become very remunerated for the empowerment of the women so these are some of the production level enterprises then service providing enterprises service providing enterprises mainly two things custom hiring centers and agro dealership of input so certainly for this uh, agro dealership of inputs it it requires some uh, educated people or educated women and it is possible uh, in a big scale and uh, this custom hiring center is very much found feasible at the village level we have uh, uh, established 44 custom hiring center and it is functioning in the koraput district and mayurbhuj district of the uh, odisha so what this uh, these are the some of the photograph of the custom hiring center uh, paddy thresers and all those equipments we have provided sprayer we have provided thresher we have provided uh, seed uh, uh, seed treatment drum we have provided so suppose what the women are doing this is the center they have identified and they are taking this uh, seed uh, treatment drum or the uh, rice uh, harvest thresher on a nominal cost on the basis of per hour so they are contributing and depositing this uh, money in the custom hiring center so in that way the women has become the entrepreneur at the village level and they are giving the benefit at the village level itself that is the local uh, local entrepreneurship type model that you can initiate at the village level to facilitate to the other women farmers for their livelihood security then uh, input producer uh, enterprises plant nursery nursery raising you might have seen 100% population uh, participation of women is there then vermicomposting yes there are women as well as men but once the uh, this packaging uh, area is coming 100% participation by the women is being done then fish hatchery again fish hatchery is uh, also coming in very big way and uh, this women are very much expert to handle this fish hatchery enterprises and it is being also promoted by the government of india also then there are the processing and marketing enterprises uh, fresh fish kiosks value added products then mobile vending here uh, if i will talk about the fish kiosk in the rural areas uh, or in the urban areas if you see in the small vendor who is selling the fish mostly they are the women so their participation women's participation is very much uh, there in the fish uh, uh, selling and if they can economically empower these women can be economic economically empowered they can establish some kiosks if they can be provided this uh, budget system and uh, in urissa some kiosk has been also developed by the funded by the government of urissa that is chilika fresh so fresh vegetable is coming from the chilika you may be knowing a very good lagoon and uh, from that uh, they are selling uh, and this still the fresh and people are buying it's a very successful model then value added products uh, there are lot of sauces which has been uh, papad murabba achar chutney all those things are value added products and this is being sold and uh, and people are purchasing as well as this type of things is being exported also then mobile vending very new concept and this uh, mobile vending has been found very much successful in the bangalore karnataka this through this mobile when uh, mobile vending the farmers are harvesting their vegetables 
and early in the morning these vehicle uh, mobile vans are going on their uh, field itself they are collecting the vegetables and their area has been decided in the urban areas and these vehicles are going to those urban areas uh, early in the morning from 8 to 10 or 11 and they are selling all the vegetables so very good model fresh vegetables is available to the consumers as well as there is no problem for the selling and uh, the vegetable to the farmers or growers uh, and for this uh, purpose now government of india has also decided some of the policy that they have given a right to the farmers that uh, now the farmers can sell their produce anywhere in the country or they can produce directly their produce to the global market so this big decision has been taken by the central government in initially there was a limitation that farmers cannot go beyond the, the state they have to go their local mandi only so now that barrier has been uh, curtailed and uh, the, uh, the facility has been uh, launched for the farmers they can uh, sell their produce throughout the globe yes so let us know about this uh, the 10 best women entrepreneurs in india bandana luthra madam the founder of vlcc we all are using this vlcc product that the beautification and wellness sector you, are, you might all be knowing then the second biggest entrepreneur madam is kiran majumdar sa the founder of biocon limited she has started this bio pharmaceuticals firm then priya paul the chair person of park hotel so you see this is the mindset only that uh, from agriculture they are going to the hotel so if they will be empowered they can do anything subjected to available availability of the facility and knowledge uh, then padmasri ritu kumar you see this entrepreneur fashion designer she is simply a fashion designer and she has been awarded as a padmasri so this is the status of women in the enterprise areas then suchi mukherjee founder and ceo of uh, limard online clothing and lifestyle accessories today we are purchasing so many things from the amazon flipkart and all those things so this madam has also started online clothing and lifestyle accessories and they have started the, the business and it is performing very nice indro noi you all are knowing very well you all have being uh, involved in the purchasing of this amazon so this is the madam indra noi she is one of the board member of amazon and contributing for the development of amazon and now the amazon has uh, entered in on the grocery items during this pandemic lockdown period they have also entered the, in the grocery items or they are supplied to the door to door this uh, grocery items then aditi gupta the co founder of uh, menestupedia that is a comic book only to illustrate and educate girls about menstruation so see you see the thought of thinking that how the people are women becoming the entrepreneur by putting a simple thought and giving lot of time and uh, investment they have become the entrepreneur through a comic book then falguni nair the founder of nika what is nika an online cosmetic and wellness product just like the vlcc and other uh, uh, wellness product uh, company is there then vani kola founder kalari capital founded two companies right work and creator software just like this uh, will gates and all those things these madam have also uh, founded two companies for software then radhika ghai agrawal co founder and cmo sap clues com that is e commerce business online business she has also established one company and they are providing lot of things is available on the sap clues.com that is the e commerce business anybody can visit on this uh, site and purchase whatever they require so these are some of the Uh, examples of the best uh, women entrepreneurs they are contributing towards the development of the country uh, in different sector not only in agriculture sector but as well as in the different sector so as i have told that uh, our thought of thinking uh, 
is narrow we are not recognizing their work that's why some of the time uh, when the talk is coming about this uh, women empowerment or women contribution people are telling nahi nahi wo kuch nahi karte hain unka contribution bahut kam hai so this is not our in uh, our country level but as it, as well as it is a global level and uh, about 153 representatives of the different countries participated to finalize this sustainable development goal sdg goal and they have finalized 17 goals of sustainable development goals for the holistic development of the world india was also one of the country and whole world is addressing these issues and these issues has to be addressed by 2030 initially it was uh, initially it was a millennium development goal mdg millennium development goal, goal and uh, the tenure was given 2020 20, but anyhow that uh, could not be addressed so these uh, some something has been addressed so the the things which has been addressed they have been discarded and some new has uh, new things has been uh, considered and the name has been changed as the sustainable development goals and we have to complete these goals at the dg suits by 2030 because until unless there is there is no time from the things is going on going on going on i would like to tell uh, one example at this moment in my office one of the ngo was visiting and uh, he is working i will not take the name of the ngo he is working in the korapur district so some other people may be knowing that korapur is a backward district of the odisha and mostly dominated by the tribal so he wanted some of the collaboration from our institute to do something in that korapur uh, area so i asked from him that uh, from how many years you are working uh, in korapur he has told sir i am uh, working my ngo is working from 24 years then i asked him if you are working in 24 years in korapur how many more year you will require for the development of the korapur so this is the thing until and unless you will not put a frame or put a timeline the things will going on going on wo 24 year ngo chalega again 24 year chalta rahega it will continue like that because there is no time frame so the things will be stable uh, and uh, nothing will be getting done in the proper manner so here this all country had decided no 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 we will put a bar and by 2030 we will all whole of the country or whole of the globe will address these issues what is the global issues biggest issue of the global issue is no poverty and zero hunger this is the biggest issue not for india as well as the different for the globally this is the biggest issue that poverty should not be there and hunger should not be there so if we are talking about this zero hunger until and unless is this goal number 5 gender equality and goal number 17 partnership for the goals if this will not be converged it is not possible to address the issue of the zero hunger so whole world is looking fao and uh, this uh, food and agriculture organizations plus uh, various uh, cgir icgir institutions they are more focus is gender now and uh, they all are working for the gender empowerment gender equality gender equity and ultimately they have to address the issue this second issue zero hunger and once zero hunger will be addressed certainly there will be poverty issue will be automatically handled so all are the uh, goals are co related with each other this is not uh, none of the goal is separate that you can address separately but in this goal main focus is uh, zero hunger that is uh, substituted uh, by the gender equality and partnership so if we are talking about the entrepreneurship development so gender equality is very much required until and unless we will not uh, think about this gender equality and partnership this entrepreneurship development will be not possible at a global level so here i am talking about this uh, no no poverty that is first gender development goal under this uh, first gen 
SDG goal, no poverty, uh, four components were there. Poverty alleviation, nutrition security, as I, I was telling that uh, now the people are talking about the nutrition security, not for the food security. You see here, the people have started to think about the nutrition security. And third component is income generation, for which our uh, central government has learned the program DFI, doubling the farmer's income, and gender equality, as well as equity. So now the people have understood, until and unless we will not uh, maintain this equilibrium, gender equity and equality, it is not possible to address this, even this first goal of this no power. So here, uh, if you see the data, 15.2% of Indian population is undernourished. 194.6 million people go hungry every day. This is the global data. And uh, if you see again, not only the women are undernourished, are uh, undernourished, are malnourished, men is also malnourished. VAD, vitamin A deficiency, vitamin A deficiency, mostly common in India and Vietnam. Then you see the deficiency, again mostly common in India and uh, Afghanistan. So these are the some of the nutritive deficiency which is very much common in the human being. And obesity, obesity has been also considered as one of the malnourishment indicator. If we are obese, we are malnourished. Why we are malnourished? Because our nutritional system, digestion system is not perfect. That whatever we are eating, that can be digested in the body. So we should not be become obese. So that is the thing. So we have to reduce the obesity. We have to reduce the malnutrition. We have to reduce the stunted growth. So these are the some of the goals which has been identified by the women, uh, sorry, SDG, and it is not possible until and unless through the gender equity and equality with the, without the participation of the women. Yes, gender gap is crucial, as I was talking since beginning, that uh, here is two things. What is gender equality and what is gender equity? Equity and equality. Equality deals allocating equal resources to the everyone. Equal resources means there are 10 women. So if you are giving 10,000 rupees each, so you have to provide 10,000 rupees each to each woman. Then it will be called equality. Equity, how will make equity? provide people access to the same opportunities. They don't have the access. Here in the figure, it is very much clear that in equality, all the three people are standing in a table that is of a same height. A stool is equal, but difference is there. From the front, you can see only two person, third is not visible. So if we are going to address the gender equality only, then certainly there will be some of the part of the people, they will not be visible. But when we are going to address the gender equity, so we have to increase their access. In the first, he is standing uh, on the ground floor, but to bring equal, uh, equity at the equal level, second one has been provided one is tool of some height, so the, now the height of both the people is equal. How, height means standing in the society is equal. We have made the equal. Then we can say thou, now the gender equity has been addressed by providing some of the facility. So once they become the equal, then thereafter we can start them support. So basic ground is there to bring them uh, in equity line. All of the women. Then, then thereafter, we can promote for this uh, 
uh, entrepreneurship development. Indian context, India rank in 112 position among 153 countries in global gender gap index in 2020. This is recent data. In it, 2018, the rank was 108. And in 2020, it has slipped by four places. Now it has become 112. Although various schemes have been proposed, various schemes have been launched, and our work has been strengthened for the empowerment of the women. But again, there is, just, uh, there is, there is uh, some problems that this gender, uh, gender gap index is slipping in India. It means we are not addressing this uh, gender issues in a proper manner. So we have to give the much more attention to address this gender issues, to address this gender equity, equality, to address this zero hunger as well as poverty. India's global gender policy score is 0 0.48, which represents an extremely high level of gender inequality. On every parameter of the gender inequality index, India lags behind even both of the neighboring countries, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Our neighboring Bangladeshi women are more, much more empowered. Pakistani women are much more empowered than India. So you see that although these people are, these countries are very small in comparison to India, but their mindset, their mind thinking is very weak toward the gender empowerment, gender equity, and gender equality. So we have to change our mindset. We have to change our policy and programs to address these issues. Indian agriculture sector accounts 70%, 70% of India's gross domestic products, GDP, and provides employment to more than 50% of the country's workforce. Now it is estimated that percentage of agricultural workers of total workforce would drop to 25.7 percent by 2050 from 58.2 percent is 2001. What is the reason that agricultural worker workforce will be dropped? Going to be dropped once agriculture workforce will be dropped. We are facing that problem. You might be also facing those problems who are. Uh, uh, who are connected with the rural areas having the agriculture it is very difficult nowadays to take the to find the laborers to conduct the work as the village labor so again it is forecasted that this percentage of work for labor force again will drop but uh, this uh, will certainly uh, supported by the mechanization that is going to become in very big way According to Oxfam 2018, agriculture sector employs 80% of all economic active women in India. They comprise 33% of agriculture labor force and 48% of the self-employed farmers. So what is this self-employed man? Means they have started some of the business and they are giving uh, opportunity to some of the women farmers or men farmers to earn some something. Between 2004 to 5 and 2011 to 12, there has been a net uh, reduction of 30.57 million labor force in the agriculture sector. Everywhere we are the data that this labor force is reducing day by day. There is a reason that the migration of the people, but due to this COVID-19, the situation has been changed. People are market, migrate, returning back from their workplace and now it has become a challenge to the government then how they can survive those uh, farmers or the, those the workers who has returned back to the uh, rural areas what activity has been should be initiated so for, for that purpose only this honorable uh, prime minister has uh, launched this uh, program at nirbhar bharat and with a, with a total value of 1 lakh, lakh crore fund under this at nirbhar bharat so that is uh, being facilitated on and on the line of this uh, uh, contributing towards the migrating people. This US government uh, has also uh, launched some of the scheme and various other global uh, level uh, countries, they are also launching this uh, scheme. 
to sustain the migrant people. Issue of migration of male members from rural household lack of interest rural youth in agriculture are prominent. Feminization of Indian agriculture. Yes, initially it was migration was there and uh, various schemes was launched by the ICR that is area attracting retain, and retaining rural youth in agriculture and uh, some other schemes has been also launched uh, to how to retain this uh, and that that is the main reason that uh, why this agriculture has been declared as a professional subject so people should take the interest in the in the agriculture itself i would like to give here some of the example in the sweden uh, the farmers they are having big big farm and 100% mechanized so there is a government policy that they have to grow minimum 10% of the air 10% land of their farm as a forest because uh, in some of the areas this is the coal is the main source to it bahut thanda hota hai very cold in that region so just to provide the heat to the urban areas and the village rural areas this fire wood is very much required so that has been made mandatory that 10% forest should be there then again government has uh, made a policy that the government will pay 10000 euro one euro cost is around 62 rupees so we can say that 62000 uh, rupees per hectare government will pay and government will uh, acquire their land and farm this uh, producer will work there and all the inputs will be given by the government and the the things we are produced will be purchased by the government and uh, sold by the government and a fixed price will be given to the producer so in that way uh, some of the farmers uh, children they have already uh, got some of the employment and due to that policy they are leaving their job and coming in the agriculture so now this is the time to in india so agriculture should be more remunerated there should be a policy frame uh, so that we can retain thus our young youth in the agriculture particularly this our uh, agricultural graduates who is coming from this uh, village level and our various schemes has been launched by the state government state government as well as the central government to retain these people and uh, as i have told that our national education policy has been also framed that uh, 2020 to retain these people in the business oriented activity then here this farm women constitute an important component of human resource agriculture in india 79% of women are involved in agriculture and allied activities against only 63% of men that is the data of nsso 2010 so here you see that uh, data is uh, there data is accepting that women population is there in, involved in the agriculture but our mindset our policy makers due to mindset they are not accepting that the women participation is there up to a significant extent in rural india around 84% of women depend on agriculture for their livelihood so gender issues versus women entrepreneurship we have talk about this gender women So what is the problem uh, how this is gender issue if we address this gender issue how we can promote this women entrepreneurs the un have identified gender equality as one of the sustainable development goals i have already told so this has been already explained no need then roles and responsibilities of women farmers in agriculture so until unless we are not able to identify their role and their responsibilities it is uh, impossible to promote them as an entrepreneur first we have to identify what they are doing what is their responsibility what uh, where as a government institution we have to intervene to bring them uh, as a entrepreneur so under fruit cultivation activities nursery raising activity care and maintenance of recently planted orchards irrigation and application of manure and fertilizers basin cleaning weeding hoeing application of pesticides 
particularly this bodiac's mixture in the fruit and vegetables harvesting post harvest operation activities like pulling sorting grading and packing and finally storage all these activities being done by the women so here are some of the act if we will be able to identify or if we will want to promote some of the women group so suppose any group is involved in the storage any group is involved in the harvesting so what is the venture further venture and who to, who are the corporate social responsibility sector who are the government scheme which can be converged with these self help groups to bring them in the age entrepreneur so we have to study all those things and accordingly we can promote this movement under vegetable condition you see land preparation collection of vegetables seed bed preparation sowing and seedling production transplanting application of fire and manure weeding and hoeing watering harvesting cleaning sorting and packing so all these activities been being done in the vegetable cultivation by the women so these are again it is not only the activity but it is the uh, point of intervention when we can intervene for their uh, capacity building for their skill development and for their further development here are some of the picture a uh, involvement in vegetable marketing yes here is a small business you see this is a model of a small business all the women are sitting on the road side they are having their own produce this we can say that this is a local local business or an under atmanirbhar bharat whatever prime minister has said लोकल को वोकल बनाना है लोकल को वोकल बनाना है और अभी हम लोग जो इंस्टीट्यूशन का रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी आता है दैट वॉज द अपील फ्रॉम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर कि लोकल को वोकल बनाना है इट वॉज फ्रॉम द पब्लिक एंड फ्रॉम द इंस्टीट्यूशन अपील इज देयर लोकल को वोकल बना के ग्लोबल बनाना है लोकल देन वोकल देन ग्लोबल सो वंस वी विल थिंक अबाउट द ग्लोबल because the global issue is dg goal is already there they have to address this uh, gender equity equality so we have always think about the global level certainly the things will be going to be very nice again here some of the examples of this uh, local vending that is every everywhere women are participating yes this is very important information that preference of cultivation of fruit and plantation capan which crop is being preferred by women which crop is being preferred by men suppose any crop is not being preferred by the women it is not possible to develop the entrepreneur uh, which is, is an woman but if it is preferred by the women if they are taking the interest certainly there is a chance that we can develop this women group as a entrepreneur you take the example of banana this is the first preference of the woman while in the man mango is the first preference while in the second preference of woman is mango third preference of jackfruit fourth is coconut fifth is guava sixth is lime seventh is orange and eighth is custard again now you will ask what is the reason why there is a preference difference so there is also the region region for preference of cultivation of fruit crops men or women this home home consumption one region then firewood and other region because suppose if there is no cooking responsibility 100% goes on the women soldier and if there is no firewood women man is not worried this is the responsibility of women so women are thinking like that that uh, this will also provide the nutrition as well as the firewood sale purpose man's preference is maximum on the sale purpose but women has the less preference for the sale then worship purpose again women's maximum preference for the worship purpose flowers then uh, utilize backyard if it is possible to utilize in the backyard purpose again women given the more preference processing purpose if it is processable again women is giving much more preference then uh, profitable yes if you are going to the profit man man always think about the profit so their preference if the things is profitable men will go the profit but there are various parameters you see the most important parameter as the globally people are talking about now it is that is nutrition of the family or nutrition security women is giving the maximum preference for the 
nutrition security in the in comparison to men so that's why it is the preference uh, is different different and uh, we have to see that uh, which preference is more for the women where more participation of the women and which is going to address these our national or global issues certainly if you are going to address those things there will be lot of supporter various conversion program will be there there will be a lot of supporters under the corporate social responsibility there will be lot of support from the government side once you will give your presentation that this is the preference and women giving much more preference that is a national goal or a global agenda so we will uh, we are we want to move in that direction certainly you will get the support from each and every level similarly preference of cultivation of vegetables here again pumpkin cultivation preference first preference danger second okra third rich guard fourth bitter guard fifth tomato sixth but in case of the men tomato is the first preference and women is in the last preference so here again we have given the region of preference of cultivation of vegetable crops the what were the region sale purpose profitability high yield processing purpose seed purpose market purpose nutrition region again you see the last uh, bar diagram nutrition region due to nutrition region my women are liking uh, always they are worried about the nutrition but men is always about worried about the profit flower again the uh, marigold is the first preference for men and women both then tuberose same third jasmine is the third preference of the women while rose is the first third preference of men then china rose again but chrysanthemum is preferred by the men and chandni gladiolus is not preferred by the women chandni is preferred so these are the some of the interventions again in the flower cultivation and flower industry is going very big way and you saw that uh, this thailand thailand economy depends on the 100% depends on the flower business regions of preference of cultivation of flower for worship purpose women ka preference zyada hai then sale purpose men ka preference zyada hai then beautification of house women preference zyada hai then profitability again men ka preference zyada hai so these are the diameter see if you think about this profitability you have to address the man you have to attack the man you can uh, grow this man as a entrepreneur but if you are uh, uh, interested to grow the women so you have to establish some of the company who is going to produce or uh, establish some of the worship related enterprises so in that way you can promote the women processing and value addition gender greater role as i have already told in the, my presentation that horticulture is coming very big way then in processing sector women constitute 90% of the labor force in cashew processing industries labor exhaustive operations like selling peeling and cashew completely done by the women workers in industry that are not well equipped with infrastructure lot of problem is there in the cashew industry and 100% work is being done by the women then preparation of processed products which uh, pickle sauce chutney all those things being done by the women that is the exclusive role then preparation of whole and grounded spices medicinal herbs etc again this is the women role a uh, dried and rehydrated home decorated item prepared from flower and other ornamental trees this hyderabad the tamil nadu this uh, uh, hyderabad agriculture university they have also very developed very good technology and uh, they are selling uh, dried flower by uh, vacuum packing in the glass uh, packet glass packings so that has become a good enterprise now in hyderabad then sorting grading packing and packaging of horticultural crops certainly it is being done by the women in the horticulture sector so all those things is the i uh, discussed now we have to come on then the what is the constant and issues general issues is there that horticulture and life if you talk about the horticulture this is biggest challenge 
Horticulture, unlike food grains, does not enjoy a safe net like the minimum support price. There is no any minimum support price by the state government or central government for any of the horticultural produce. The input costs are much higher as compared to the food grains or crops, which make it difficult to set up a marginal and small farmers, particularly farming. And if, uh, if there is a maximum support price, certainly there is no problem to initiate the agriculture, farming, or uh, whatever things for the income generation. But in horticulture sector, this is the biggest challenge. Uh, further limited knowledge, availability of uh, uh, availability of uh, manpower intelligence for local, national, and exports make it challenging option. Yes, our women are having not uh, very good knowledge about this national level and uh, global level. And uh, until and unless you think about this export level, it is difficult to sustain your uh, business nowadays because this uh, due to agreement of GATT and open access to the platform global market, it is very difficult to have to without having the knowledge to prosper or uh, sustain any of the business. There is, uh, we have uh, divided in three categories, social, economical and technological issues and constraints. Social issues never acknowledge the amount of labor women puts in the agriculture, never given the status of farmer, always regarded as agricultural labor. Uh, who are farmers? If they are having land on their name, only they are the farmers. And hardly we are getting the women population, they are having land on their name. But yes, in the tribal sector, there are some of the population, they are having, uh, women are having the land on their names, so they are the farmers there. Then never given ambient scope and opportunity to upskill herself. Suppose when we are organizing the training program, see in this training program, I don't know how many men and how many women are there, but I am very much sure that women population will be very less. Uh, always uh, overburdened with household chores because that become their first responsibility and uh, our thought is also, our this uh, male dominated uh, thought of the mindset is also that the woman responsibility is only household activity. And if it is that, that household activity is the only responsibility of the woman, then in my previous slide you have seen this, how these 10 uh, women entrepreneurs uh, have uh, established their big, big enterprises. So it is nothing like that. We have to send mindset and we have to give them opportunity. Like access to a quality life and several productive resources owing to societal taboos. Yes, there are, as I am talking, mindset. Uh, there are by serious social restrictions. Women cannot go in the training program. Women cannot go to the uh, uh, exposure visits. So these are the some of the you know, social taboos. Initially, that uh, girls were not being sent to the schools. But things is now changing. And uh, government is also giving or framing the various policies that women and girls is also coming forward. So let us have, we have to support them to bring them in the mainstream. So these are the, some of the social issues. Then economical issues, often like ownership of land seldom enjoys property rights. Initially it was there, but recently government has framed some of the policy, land rights is also, also there, so equal rights of the girl and boy child, they will have equal rights on their ancestral parental property. So the things will be changing. As a result, often fails to get bank loans, government subsidies, and schemes which are meant to exclusively for individual possessing ownership of agricultural land. Here is a very good example. Even then, uh, this uh, land is not on their name. Urissa government has started joint livelihood group. Joint livelihood group. If any five group of SSG are five members, like-minded, suppose they are, they want to start this uh, pigry, they want to start goat tree, they want to start mushroom production, five, five numbers, they are coming directly with their Aadhaar card, PAN card, whatever it is, even there is no land, the, due to the support of the government policy, bank are bound to give them the loan. And this uh, model is very much successful in the Orisha. Do not have a bank account in many cases to perceive operational constants in handling bank accounts. Okay, this has been addressed. 
often receive lower wages rate for same amount of work than then and their make male counterparts yes it is happening and uh, it is uh, running in various states also but uh, recently niti ayog has frame frame one guidelines ki there will be and uh, this uh, finance ministry has also circulated the rate for the icr institutions that that there will be no difference in any of the icr institutions in the wage rate of the men and women equally they will be paid so similarly was the central level has this they taken the decision certainly later or sooner it will be percolated to the government level state government level and it will be implemented so this uh, challenge this issue will be also addressed technological issue is the biggest issue now a day uh, if you want to talk about this uh, entrepreneur our this uh, business people like thikki and all those uh, people they are telling that agriculture is the business of science listen carefully agriculture is the business of science suppose you have grown 10 kg of banana that is the traditional system you are putting fertilizer pesticides all those things but if you have grown this organic banana you have given some technological inputs you have employed some techniques what will, this will give you have incorporated science that is the organic banana you have put some other science so now it has become the organic banana so that is very essential to think that what technology we can put we can add in each and every sphere of the life to promote the agriculture as a business so this is totally about the technological issues and constraints so for this technological issues and constraints only the state agriculture universities icr institutions kvk and line departments are responsible and they have to address these issues lot of technologies is now available and uh, and the icr system yam portal has been uh, initiated yam kisan has been initiated and uh, each and uh, every institution have their website so all those technologies are available on the website and we can uh, explore those technologies available there and accordingly we can instigate those technologies down scale those technologies to the grassroots level to empower the women and upgrade them as a entrepreneur other problems lack of access and control over farm resources certainly men dominated things is there occupational health hazards muscular disorder respiratory problems bodily discomfort etc only due to that reason honorable prime minister of india has told that the drudgery issue should be addressed of the women because their maximum population of the women is there in the agriculture then migration of male member to urban areas feminization of agriculture without adequate resources yes suppose uh, in previous time you have you think that various training program has been organized for the dissemination of technology in agriculture sector but if you go for the data and uh, you will not find that uh, up to uh, satisfactory level women have been empowered on the technological front to cultivate to organize this uh, taking the agriculture uh, as a uh, business hamara jo kuch bhi training program hota hai usme maximum population men ka hota hai women hardly come why what is the reason women is not coming because we are not scheduling our time frame as per their age we are scheduling our time frame of the training program as per our age and uh, what is our age the age that which is suitable to me and that thing is maximum suitable to men because women has to take the responsibility of their home their house their children their livestock their parents so hardly they are getting very few time you have to identify those leisure time that where is the rest and if you can conduct 
training program during that period, which may be for one hour only, it may be for two hours only, certainly you will be able to disseminate your technology to the women. Lack of empowerment, no rights in making production and marketing decisions. So gradually it is increasing, particularly this right is available in the tribal sector, but in other sector it is not available, man is taking uh, the leading hand. So once, uh, and this is the reason because their exposure is not there, they have not been exposed too much, their knowledge is not there, they have not been facilitated with the Android phone so that they can uh, access the knowledge, uh, global level knowledge. So that's why decision taking uh, level is very poor at the women front. So if uh, any government policy is coming there that uh, to support this uh, media things and uh, this woman will become the empowerment and for your kind information. Recently, Indian Council of uh, Agriculture Research has been uh, signed one MOU with MITI, Ministry of uh, this uh, Communication System and uh, to uh, common service center to connect all the common service center of the village, 27,000 villages at one uh, point of time. So whatever the things will be disseminated at that same time, common service centers will be able to see those facilities or those information. Then lack of leadership, position, poor level of agree entrepreneurship. Yes, leadership again there is lacking because we are not giving them opportunity how they will become the leader. So once this thing was happening, government uh, has made a policy, no, there will be 33% reservation of the women in the election or polling for the election of the selection of the government. So now it is being implemented, 33%. So same type of support is also required in the uh, this uh, entrepreneurship development mode. And uh, this government is also had taken the decision to empower the women in various sectors, and they are giving the funding also. Uh, particularly, I am giving, uh, I will give uh, various schemes which has been uh, launched by the central government for the empowerment of the women and giving uh, various funding to be, to bring them up as a entrepreneur. Here, some of this uh, thing has been done. Uh, in our institution, some of the model has been built for the providing this. Uh... So, just I was looking after the time. It is going to be 12:20, and my tenure is, uh, duration is up 12 12:30 uh, only. So I have uh, another 10 minutes. So I think that uh, I have to go in short and uh, quick, so that I will be able to complete. So some of the model has been developed in the, our institution. This ICRC was Central Institute for Women in Agriculture. Uh, here we have developed uh, five food-based cropping models. And uh, the, under that model, that was a guava-based, mango-based, minor fruit-based, coconut-based, and cashew-based. Out of these models, we have found that among all combinations, guava as pineapple-based was the found most profitable with total income of 1,16,682 per hectare. So if that type of model can be uh, multiplied and can be disseminated at the grassroots level. And if these models can be incorporated as a organic production, certainly this uh, uh, income will be much higher. So again, here is a guava plus pineapple model, mango plus marigold model, coconut plus aromatic model, and here we have shown in the bar diagram the profit. So it can, these models can be replicated and uh, translated to the grassroots level on the basis of the availability and requirement of the crops. These are some of the pictures of the different model which has been developed in our institutions. Again, these are the, some of the models. Uh, then multi-story cropping model is also we have developed under this multi-story cropping, top story crop was coconut, second story crop was under coconut garden, we have taken second story crop that was papaya, banana and guaya, and third story crop was pineapple, cowpea, turmeric and elephant fruit. So, again here uh, we have uh, pointed guard micro propagation, we have uh, trained some of the women to grow this tissue culture plant. And uh, you know that this is tissue culture plant is uh, much more resistant to the insect pests and diseases. 
So if you grow this uh, transfer this tissue culture plant in the field, certainly you are going to minimize there this cost of input on the cultivation. Homestead nutrition garden we have we are also promoting on the basis of availability of the land. But various nutrition garden model has been developed in our institute as well as through the Akripan Home Science in different centers. This uh, resource efficient horticulture model that is in this uh, system we have uh, done this meadow orcharding of guava, multi-story cropping models, high density planting of banana, papaya, pineapple, lime, vegetable crops in open field and protected conditions and tuber crops we have grown and uh, elephant fruit yam uh, given this uh, profit of uh, 80,000 uh, per hectare per year and cowpea given this uh, additional profit of rupees 45,000 per hectare per year. So these are the some of the uh, models we have developed. Here the women are participating, they are doing the activities. We do are chatting high density planting. We are, we are increasing the population and once we are increasing the planting population, their height become less and once height become less, it is very easy to plucking this woman. This guava field has height become less and the easy very women very easily they are plucking the guava from the field. Then coconut based I have already explained. Uh, here if you see if we are taking this main crop in the last three lines, if we are taking main crops at uh, coconut with banana and turmeric, total benefit was 4,62,000. If we are taking coconut with banana plus elephant food yam, this uh, profit was reduced up to 252000 per hectare. And if you are banana, this coconut plus banana plus cowpea, the profit was uh, again reduced by 2,6,000. ,00 so this model was there, the coconut plus banana plus turmeric. But uh, it depends upon the locality. If turmeric is not in demand, banana is not, banana is almost everywhere in the demand. That's why banana is coming in all the three models. And second crop is element food am and cowpea. This depends upon the requirement of the market. So you can promote these models in your areas. So uh, to, to become this, uh, uh, to promote these models, they can earn a income. And if they are, if they are going again in the organic way, they can uh, establish one enterprise also. These are some of the pictures. I have already explained this resource experiment model. Yes, high value vegetable crops required less time and giving more remuneration we help apply. This is a uh, uh, onion uh, plant. It is very much uh, common in the Odisha state for the vegetable purpose. Then null coal and uh, this uh, cauliflower and cabbage. These are very much required and very much uh, consumable in the Odisha state market, including ginger. So these can be promoted and uh, now the people uh, is being uh, promoting and government is also giving the support by established Reliance Press and Udyan Press like of things. And these vegetables are directly going to the Udyan Press and Reliance Press. So here these are some of the training program. Yes, protray seedling production technology. Yes, so yes, if you can promote this woman as a nursery grower. So this technology is very much effective and they can produce any type of nursery. Initially, they are producing in this pro tray in the in-house and after some time they are putting in the outside. So this early germination of the early germination of this nursery can be ensured and early planting can be ensured and early production will also ensure. So that will fetch higher, higher income, higher rate. So here uh, is another uh, model for the economics of egg type rural poultry. Women are maximum participation of women are in the poultry sector. So total cost input cost was 25,000 rupees. And uh, by following uh, all those uh, scientific recommendations, uh, net income was uh, profit. You can say this was a profit in uh, six months, 233,050 rupees. With an investment of 25,000, the women are getting 2,33,000 net profit by deducting all the investment. So this model is very much effective, efficient for the women. We can promote at the local level, women entrepreneur in the 
uh, egg type rural poultry and uh, how you can sell this uh, rural egg poultry can be linked with the school midday meal program so there will be no problem for the selling yes here are some of the scheme which has been launched by the central government for the women empowerment especially that is stand up india start up india annapurna scheme sri shakti package of women entrepreneurs sen kalyani scheme that is that is scheme of central bank mudra yojana scheme government of india mahila udyan nidhi scheme government of india dena shakti scheme dena bank orient mahila vikas yojana scheme oriental bank so these are the some of the schemes which has been launched by the government as well as the public sector bank they also want to promote the women uh benefits of rural women in agricultural entrepreneurship what benefit we will get if you are going to promote the rural women in the entrepreneurship certainly they will reduce the migration in the cities rural women resources could channelized by identifying appropriate business ventures so as to empower them as i had told uh, very extend various parameters that you have to identify the right parameter that which you can intervene as the availability or requirement of your locality for their further empowerment increase in rural income will pave the way for this development of the rural areas transportation cost as well as post harvesting losses of the perishable commodities can be reduced agri entrepreneurship are created in rural areas so if you are going to create this agri entrepreneur at the rural areas so certainly we are going to contribute in a big way towards the gdp of the our country either you produce the things or you reduce the losses if you are producing the things you are contributing to the gdp of the country even then if you are reducing although whatever you have produced you have you are reducing the losses again indirectly you are contributing to us the uh, gdp so in that way we have to think about this harvesting losses we have to reduce uh, again this uh, agri entrepreneurship in rural areas will improve their infrastructure and will have a boosting effect on the aspect like transportation road in availability of production and economy this uh, rashtriya kishi vikas yojana 100% uh, giving uh, this uh, infrastructure arrangement for the construction of buildings and uh, store houses at the rural areas then employment opportunities agri entrepreneurship will able to utilize the energies of rural youth and their lesson and social levels and mischiefs in the village as i have told there is a change of mindset is required so once we will uh, promote this agri entrepreneurship certainly rural youth will be in, in, empowered and uh, you know that uh, our rural youth they are not going to take this cultivation certainly uh, they are very much interested for the business so this is we have to harvest their mindset we have to harvest their thinking by the giving by the facilitation of those uh, rural youth it will help in raising the livelihood and thus the social status of the women through employment creation uh, the unexploited and underexploited natural and local resources would be productively utilized yes there are various local resources that has not been utilized to take the example of super food what is coming now in uh, days it is called super food just take the example of ragi take the example of lean seed uh, take up the example of minor millets now it has been called as a super food at the national level at global level but these resources have not been utilized at the local level so and it is very much available at the local level so once we will able to uh, channelize all those things local foods it can be grow as a super food market with the involvement of our local women so what are the challenges for this agro uh, entrepreneurship development size heterogeneity and diversity implementation problem is there small marginal and big farmers is there farm women is there then in consistent gender disaggregated data we don't have the proper data for this uh, empowerment of the women then socio cultural na social taboos we are having various social taboos which reduce the opportunity for the development and then uh, limited it access I, I i have already talked that it is not possible to uh, run the android phone by each of the women uh, but uh, it is possible by the each of the men they can run the uh, android phone nowadays 
lack of access to the resources cutting edge technology is very much required and we have to provide them cutting edge technologies at per demand and at per requirement and the gender sensitization is very much required for that we have been talking i have been talking similarly yes just a minute sorry so here some of the success stories it is very essential to know that success story of samudram fisherman federation of orissa only fisherman they have made a fisher women and it includes 68 marine fisher women self help groups having 1360 members and they have started from one 68 marine fisher women ssgs and now they have grown by including 149 ssgs from 50 two villages ah uh, of this uh, ganjam puri jagat singhpur and balasore district and federation they have established and in a big way this federation is also supplying this fishes to the chilika fresh which has been supported by the government so in that way this women uh, ssgs are coming forward uh, another farmers producer organizations women farmers producer company it has been uh, registered by our institution chitra durga chitri dora the name of the farmer produce women farmer produce chitri dora empowering women farmers uh, 1000 farm women is there 30 producer groups are incorporated in the, under this uh, producer company and 600 tons aromatic rice is being produced and 1.8 crore turnover every year it is being done by the and all is being managed by the women then gauri a role model of enhancing livelihood of rural women through mushroom cultivation and this gauri madam uh, earning around 27000 uh, rupees per month through the production of this mushroom and she has been also awarded during the pusha krishi vigyan mela at the uh, headquarter new delhi there are various stories of this uh, women miss uh, vitika helder from uh, Chhattisgarh she has initiated their local level uh, entrepreneur in fish farming then uh, miss monita karan young rural youth is also coming in the entrepreneurship if we are giving them technology and support from chhattisgarh she has uh, started their uh, uh, mushroom cultivation and uh, annual turnover is 54 lakh and she has started with a capital of 25000 so she has been provided the technology and uh, economical support and see the output miss manju kumari baksar from bihar agri input shop she has started that entrepreneur then this madam uh, gurudev kaur deol from ludhiana she has started the organic farming you might be knowing this punjab was the maximum sufferer from the pesticide abuse and one train was coming from this uh, punjab to delhi and that train was called the cancer train so maximum people were suffered from this cancer because due to the abuse used of the pesticides and chemicals so now they are turning are thinking about towards the organic producing and whosoever is coming in the punjab as a organic producer say they they are harvesting maximum benefit and they are become the entrepreneur and you see this lady has opened this global self help group not at the punjab level but at the global level then padma padma bai from telangana she has started this custom hiring center in drudgery reducing tools i have already explained that through this uh, small uh, entrepreneur they can earn the income as they facilitate the society then lingu bai from this uh, rainbow roast chickens as i have given in this uh, my pre previous presentations this is a tribal people from this gajpati uh, area of the odisha and uh, she uh, is earning uh, 60000 rupees quarterly in four months she is earning 60000 rupees so annually she is earning 2 lakh 40000 rupees by this uh, uh, rainbow roasting chickens so to conclude women farmers are one of the major stakeholders agriculture sector and play a predominant role various on farm and off farm activities the magnitude of their participation is 
how you are visualized, which creates a perceptible gender gap. Constituting the enormous support system to the sector, it is pertinent to, to tap their full potential, uh, acknowledging their strengths, working upon the weakness, providing them with ample opportunity and mitigating their threats. Closing the gender gap in agriculture by developing gender-friendly technologies. It is very essential now. And uh, with the increasing trend of feminization in agriculture, it is crucial time to empower them with the advanced technology for the improvement of their livelihood as well as the production and productivity and increase the nutrition fortification along with witnessing the holistic development of the sector. What is the way forward? This is related to this uh, Government of India program. This is doubling the farmer's income. So we have to address the DFI with the involvement of the women. And until and unless we are not, because uh, we have to reach up to the level of your productivity optimum level. So further, it is very difficult to increase the productivity. Then how will we going to double their income? Just the diversified. Uh, agriculture, secondary agriculture, as well as the entrepreneurship development. Only then we can double their income. Then again, there is Admirbar Bharat. As, as I have told, 1 lakh crore rupees has been sanctioned under this program, local to local, local to global. Then livelihood in investment for the small and uh, stakeholders. Then uh, nutrition security, as I have told that globally people are looking after the nutrition security. So if any business or any venture, uh, women or men is going to the uh, inter in the nutrition security framework, certainly it is going to be a very big business. Then uh, hearty entrepreneurship, it is coming in very big way. Empowerment of leadership in horticulture sector, certainly various programs, national horticulture mission and uh, livelihood mission, all those things is underway. And thrust area for development of women farmers, we have to identify the thrust area right? on the basis of local needs, on the basis of uh, state needs, on the basis of national needs. And where we will be comfortable, we have to intervene to address the issue at the national level. Then post harvest and value addition, again, it is very coming in very big way, very, very big market is available there for post harvest and value addition. So we have to enter in those ventures. Then, uh, yes, mounted, uh, huh, mounted atmospheric packaging for long storability and transport of fruits and vegetables. This is a new technology so that the fruits and vegetables can be packed properly so they can durability can be increased and they can be exported to the global market. The planning, uh, coordination and monitoring our R&D program, this is very much required for the development of women entrepreneurs or any entrepreneurship research and development program support is very much required. Resource allocation, infrastructure development, technological upgradation and better policy framework is also very much required and a strong forward and backward linkage. This is the emerging things uh, that we have to think uh, every time when we are going to promote this women entrepreneurs or self-help groups. So what is the or backward and uh, uh, back, step forward and backward linkage to organize industry for sustainability? Until there is no linkage forward and backward linkage, it is very difficult to sustain any of the entrepreneurs. Then as I have told that uh, nowadays we are talking about this agriculture is a business of science and we have to go for the $5 trillion economy. So we have certainly uh, uh, to achieve this $5 trillion economy with the uh, cooperation and coordination of research and developmental department with the suitable technologies with the farmer. Then I have also uh, told that national education policy to 020 has been launched by Honorable Prime Minister that is also business oriented. So our education system should be changed as a business oriented. Our training program should be changed as a business oriented. Only then we will be able to successful to address the, uh, the expectation of the national government, central government. And this uh, continuous attempt to inspire, encourage, motivate, and cooperate women entrepreneurs awareness program should be conducted on a mass scale with the interruption of creating awareness among women about the various areas to conduct business. Until unless we are not going to them their, increase their access, increase their knowledge, 
it is very difficult to bring them to the challenging business uh, opportunities which is going to be the global level global challenging due to open up this uh, market uh, get and trade business so we have to uh, there is a requirement of constant uh, upskilling of their knowledge and uh, for that purpose skill council of india has will also formulated skill development council of india they are giving various type of skill development programs and then we can converse with the skill, uh, skill council of india to get the funding for the empowerment of the women in our areas so finally any society that uh, fails to harvest the energy and creativity of the women is at a huge disadvantage in the modern world uh, as you know that uh, nowadays we are uh, assessing the country developed countries and developing countries where the women are developed women are coming forward uh, social equity is there social equality is there they are being considered as this developed country but that countries who are developing they are not being considered uh, where is the gender differences or gender gap is there so with this word i would like to thanks for your patience hearing and uh, i am thankful to the organizing team for giving me opportunity to share my some of the views and ideas to promote the, this uh, women entrepreneur in the agriculture sector and well as to address this gender gap with the convergence of the national level government schemes programs and policies thank you very much uh, thank you sir uh, it was very nice to listen you and the uh, lecture delivered by you was very enlightening one and informative for all of us uh, now we will move toward our question and answer session so uh, now i request all the participants uh, to ask their question i have opened the chat box for everyone uh, and the participants who want to interact with sir they can raise their hand uh, now i request suresh sir to ask his question sir i have unmuted you yes very welcome good afternoon doctor yes sir Uh, it is very nice presentation. You have covered everything, top to bottom. Everything you have covered. Uh, maybe I have missed a few of the slides. I don't know. But uh, so, can you please uh, throw some light on the uh, the subsidies which government is giving to the uh, entry level entrepreneurs, actually for agripreneurs. So, can you have any something on that? Yes, sir. For that purpose, especially one program has been launched that is Stand Up India. That is a special okay. program for the women only. in their uh 50000 to 10 lakh rupees without interest for 20 years it is being provided to the women entrepreneurs for to uh, develop their any type of entrepreneurship activities and uh, there are various activities uh, also there i will send the programs and policies according the subsidies and uh, how much facilities economic facilities available i will share with kandulkar sir he may be sharing i have one table but i have missed that slide that is in another presentation so i have named their slide name the policies and programs are the name only but the economic part we have not included that is in another slide i will share those slides thank you okay so are they directly we are getting from the banks or from the nabard how are we getting it sir there are several mechanisms sir so okay. if uh, nabard has identified or they have some of the targets as i have told you the dena bank central bank uh -huh. they are having the target to uh, support this women entrepreneurs similarly nabard is also having some of the target to support this uh, women entrepreneurs so for, under that target they are providing support to the women entrepreneurs group and there are other various plans jaise here in odisha there is a badi program badi program and this nebard has funded 25000 for women through the ngo they are not giving directly to the women but through ngo some leaders should come forward and that is for the organic production so in that way they are giving and i i have told here the bank is also giving the loan a joint livelihood group with the five five women uh, coming from the any of the area for the same lighting that uh, suppose they are interested in mushroom production they are not having the land bank is giving them loan okay so i'll be happy if you can share that kind of any uh, uh, slide or something to the doctor so that he can post in our website uh, groups so okay certainly i will share that okay thank you so much doctor thank you
thank you sir uh, now anyone wants to ask question can raise their hand or they can put it in chat box madam for my knowledge uh, may i know how many women participant out of 1000 sir actually we have not uh, found that statistic so kindly share me madam <laughs> uh, sure sir okay. Uh, so there are lots of compliments for you that excellent presentation uh, informative one nice presentation outstanding one uh, this chat box is fully loaded with uh, your compliments for your presentation and your lecture uh, that you have delivered uh, and it is going on and on uh, as we are running out of time uh, so we will move toward our end of the session uh it's my honor to propose vote of thanks to dr s k shivastro sir uh, sir you have delivered very nice lecture uh, sir has delivered lecture on role of women entrepreneur in agriculture development uh, sir has also uh, described the entrepreneurship in india status of women entrepreneurship in india then scope of women inter entrepreneurship also sir has uh, explained importance of horticulture uh in entrepreneurship sector uh, roles and responsibilities of women farmer and the issues and constraints uh having uh, towards the women for entrepreneur and also the opportunities for women entrepreneurs challenges faced by them then uh, sir you have also inspired all of us with the different success stories which will help other uh, women uh, to get uh, into entrepreneurship uh, by their inspiration sir has also thrown uh, light on the first area for development of women uh, farmer overall it was very outstanding session uh, we have today uh, and uh, it was very fruitful for all the participant especially for women uh, who are uh, who will uh, who wants to get in into entrepreneurship sector uh, so uh, i am very thankful to you on the behalf of nhcp team uh if uh, you come to us uh, you join with us and deliver such a uh, outstanding lecture to all of us i am very thankful to you sir thank you sir uh, last you. but not least i am also thankful to all the participants uh, for uh, staying with us and having patience till now and uh, listen the lecture very carefully and interacted with the sir uh, thank you all of you also okay madam thank you very much for your nice comment and the comments given by the dear participants so it was encouraging for me and uh, as you know this is a corona period uh, pandemic situation is going on there so finally i have to request uh, keep your mask on and maintain your, your two gaz ki duri so stay safe keep safe and stay healthy thank you very much thank you sir Uh, now there is some information for participants uh, we have afternoon session at 3 pm uh, and uh, in the attendance uh, form you have to fill your own email address so that you will get uh, the acknowledgement of your attendance on your mail uh, thank you for joining us all of you have a good day ahead please join us at 3 pm in afternoon session